First updates now, FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. On Friday, May 29th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, come check out the incredible submissions for the Robots for the Rescue Challenge at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. PTC will be providing giveaways for both submitted robots and for those who watch live. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Let's jump into our first discussion topic. As the school year is ending, many seniors are missing their traditional graduation ceremony. An FTC team in Hawaii built a robot to give diplomas to students to maintain social distancing great while they were receiving their diplomas. What are your guys' thoughts on incorporating robotics into graduation and other school ceremonies? I mean, to start, off with, <laughs> to start off with, it's definitely a really interesting uh, outreach. <laughs> definitely uh, is a showy thing to have and really bring attention that these kids are not just there just to learn things. They can actually do some pretty neat things. I would say it also can tie in with going to sports events and having robots toss t-shirts into the crowd or whatever. And it just, it really just brings together a couple of different types of activities that students can do. Mm -hmm. And they both get to have kind of a, a spotlight in that sense. Yeah, and I think another huge thing is that it sort of shows the rest of the school, besides like the robotics team, that you know robots aren't just for tech nerds. Uh, they can be used in actual uh, applications, and they can. It sort of gets a lot of interest from kids. I feel so. I think it's actually a really good opportunity to show the real world applications of robotics. Yep. And one of the cool things that I, like you mentioned, I think that robotics teams, especially ones that are working at schools, there are a lot of opportunities like going to football games or going to pep rallies where you can bring out the robots and really engage the audience. Sanford, did you have any thoughts on this? It's, it's really interesting that they were able to build that robot, especially like during these times, because I know a lot of schools, like especially my school, closed down quite a while ago. Um, and like having access to parts is definitely hard for a lot of teams. Yep, and so this team was from Hawaii, and I definitely know that they were an FTC team because I saw a Rev Expansion Hub on that robot. <laughs> um, but I, I thought it was kind of cool how um, they're trying to make the most of what they have. Yes, it's we're in COVID and it's very hard to get together, but I'm pretty sure they just used an old robot that they had with a simple linear lift and then added a small depositor for their diploma on it. Um, and I think it's a cool way to uh, celebrate seniors because they are having a hard time now and um, a way to celebrate robotics. Any last thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, moving on, uh, I think another huge topic in uh, FIRST right now in general is these off-season events. And that's been a huge thing. And I'm not sure if many of you guys are aware, but Due to COVID-19, many popular off-season events, including CRI and MTI, uh, have been canceled for in, in FTC at least. Uh, MTI is having a virtual competition actually, uh, where they're having teams compete in a judging portion, uh, like a like a virtual judging session sort of, uh, a skills challenge, and they're having teams vote for other teams uh, for the team choice award. Uh, the judged awards will still have monetary value, like they have in past years, and the team choice award is given to the team that other teams competing vote for as having the best solution to the Skystone game. In addition, MTI will also be having the STEM Expo that they usually have uh, to learn about some space missions. And they also have their intern program still going uh, for seniors to be able to be interviewed by companies. Uh, what do you think about this approach to virtual off-season events? I think it keeps, uh, it keeps robotics to the forefront of people's minds. You don't just shut off your brain at the end of the semester mm -hmm. and turn it back on whenever the season starts up again, especially for some that have the season where they start in January. I think it really helps keeping that at the forefront of your mind and continually learn those different skills, develop, constantly research, get inspired the entire year. Because yeah. summertime, now you have tons of time, supposedly you have tons of time to be able to do what you truly want to do. So spend that time wisely. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity for these mm -hmm. students to, to really reach out with each other and, and, and get to explore in a less stressful type of environment lately. Yeah, 
I mean, that's a great point, actually. I think that with the competition still going, it sort of motivates a lot of teams to continue working on the robot and continue developing their STEM-oriented skills. Uh, but another thing I do think is a little bit weird about this is, I mean, it does draw a little bit of an uneven ground for some teams that don't uh, have access to like a full field versus other teams that, you know, might have access to a full field and um, all the stuff necessary to have like a nice presentation and everything. So I, I think it's a little bit interesting how they went about doing this. Yeah, so one of the things that stuck out to me, this was new, breaking news yesterday, uh, IRI for FRC was also canceled, but they're going to be trying to do some of the events that are known, that IRI is known for, uh, like their talent show. I don't know, Tyler, what, what exactly were they doing there? Yeah, so uh, IRI, so an interesting thing is with the talent show is that IRI actually hasn't had a talent show uh, for a couple of years. So like it used to be, I, talent show used to be huge at IRI, uh, and there may be a video of me uh, doing some weird dancing uh, if you can find it on YouTube. But uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, a big hit for us in FRC. Another big one that we took in FRC was WVROX, which was a twenty-six hour, fourteen minute straight competition. Uh, where they literally run through the night, um, and it only runs every two years. So that obviously two big hits for that. Um, but I got to ask you guys on there. You know, first it said that they're not going to really support you know things through like their FMS systems or whatever FTC uses for. But the FTC fields are way more portable than what an FRC field is, and way more people have them. So is mm -hmm. there is, could there be better potential to uh, run off season events for FTC later on the season if it's safe to do so? Yeah, I think one of the main things that's advantageous for FTC is, A, we don't need an FMS. Um, the scoring software I can download online and run on my PC, and it works just fine. And B, everybody has fields. Um, and I know most affiliate partners own their own fields. They don't borrow them from, uh, from, FR, from first headquarters. So pretty much it's up to the affiliate partners and those guys to really organize these off seasons and make them happen. I know most of the off seasons usually happen in the, before the end of July because season starts in early September. So that's one thing that definitely may make off seasons not as feasible because if things open up August, people are going to want to get ready for the next season instead of spending time competing with the Skystone robot. That's not going to really help them out. Um, but it'll be interesting to see on June 4th, they're actually going to be releasing a teaser for next year's game. And we don't know what they're going to be doing, whether it's going to be a repeat of a previous year's game or whether yeah, they're going to have a completely new game, right? If it's Skystone, then I think they're going to have off seasons in August. That way teams can actually practice before the actual season starts. Uh, so yeah. it's really going to come down to uh, A, what the status of COVID is because nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. B, um, when it ends and what next year's game could be. Mm -hmm. And I think another big thing on that note is that if, you know, the C C for Skystone at least, it started back in last September. So if the off seasons are still going to go on until August, playing the same game for almost 12 months might get a little bit boring for some teams. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I personally was hoping that they would extend, like do MTI and uh, CRI and stuff like later on in the summer. But honestly, it also gets a little bit tough with um, space because they need to book these like events pretty far in advance. And especially for FRC events, it gets even harder because of the size, the, the fields and everything you guys need. Um, so yeah, it's definitely tough to get those off season events later on in the year. FTC has like a very long season already and that leaves the off season actually pretty short in comparison to FRC, which probably why I would say that there's less of a prevalence of off seasons off seasons are mainly like a newer development um the past few years like they've started popping up and becoming more prevalent um so yeah it is like quite long to play a game for like 10 11 months yeah yeah i mean one of the things like especially in ftc i i've heard it's a big problem in frc as well burnout is definitely a thing with the students especially when you're going september to mid-July you get a month off and that month is usually prepping for the next season getting a drivetrain built or learning something new and then you're back into it again so it can definitely be tough especially on the teams that want to be very competitive so like unless something miracle happens and like 
by mid July we could have an off season. I think that it would be safer not to have off seasons and just have teams get ready for uh, the next season and make sure that they're fully prepared, train their new members because they're going to lose a lot of that time that they uh, because of COVID. Well, something yeah. also that I figured out with uh, some of our off season events, at least what we kind of do for Oklahoma is we started doing an off season event a couple of years ago and it's to help our teams that are going onwards to worlds to get that extra practice in and test different things. Um, and so our off season events are usually in March. We might do one in April, just right before worlds or something, if we really want to. Um, but it's really helpful in that regard. I mean, never really done one in the summer, but I can see how it's beneficial to do an off season event to help everyone still you know get some time to compete but also they can kind of see behind the curtain like what does this team that is so great that is making it onto worlds what are they doing that we aren't doing mm -hmm. and so sometimes an off-season event they might just have open judging where everyone gets in an, audi an auditorium and you see what their judging is and we all make a decision as a whole group best best team wins or whatever instead of having judges and I think that's a really great opportunity for students to kind of open up and go, oh, I get it now, I get it. And so maybe yeah. off-season events in that regard could be helpful because I know judging is a big, big deal and it's really difficult for some teams to just wrap their brains around what are the judges looking for? Yeah, uh, so we did have a poll in the chat and we asked uh, if people think that uh, we could play a previous year's game in this upcoming season. And majority of people said no. Um, I think that a lot of people are concerned with Skystone, especially being replayed, especially with Gluten-Free and Data Force both getting six stone autos. They've pretty much maxed out the game. Um, but I could see a previous game such as Velocity Vortex, which was a fairly inexpensive game, uh, being replayed, or something like uh, Ring It Up. That was a idea that I saw in the Swerver. Uh, Sanford, did you have any thoughts on this? Um, playing an old game would be interesting because you like the meta has evolved in the past few years quite substantially. Especially, um, full custom parts weren't legal that many years. Like a few years ago, it was still like mainly confined to like Tetrix and then like the Tetrix mm -hmm. motors. Um, in Velocity Vortex, we saw the Never Rest. I'm not entirely sure which year we saw the Never Rest. Yeah. Um, but so the meta would definitely be very different now mm -hmm. um, compared to them. And another benefit potentially is that manufacturing of the parts would have already been done once before. So it may be easier on suppliers who need to manufacture the field because um, that could also be another concern for providing a new game. Sanford, I just want to ask you a quick, yesterday we had Andy Baker from Anymark on our FRC show, and obviously Anymark is, uh, as their company goes, is pretty devastated with the extension of Infinite Recharge. Uh, as a, you know, as a, somebody who supplies yourself uh, with parts from Long Robotics, could there be some uh, adverse impacts if a game ended up being replayed, though, to suppliers in particular? Um, to suppliers, I can definitely see, to some suppliers, um, there definitely will be an impact, um, some suppliers more than others. Um, for me, probably not a massive impact, but there would be one. Um, but unlike a lot of suppliers, I don't depend on long robotics to like pay the bills. <laughs> so um, it's, I'm not in as stressed of a position compared to a lot of other places, which I can definitely like feel for them. And there's like a lot of businesses just beyond like FTC in the service sector that are really struggling during these times. Yeah, so with Andy Mark, uh, one of the things is they provide our fields, right? They make our fields. And I think that's the major sales that they do to FTC. Uh, because from my experience, I don't know if it's been different in your regions. Uh, not many people use many Andy Mark products in their robots besides the motors and the fields. Right, those are the two big things that they sell to FTC teams. Um, and so I think that by creating a new game, it's definitely gonna help them out. So it may end up being very good for them in the long run. Yeah. You also oh. like do have to admire some of like the engineering that goes on in those fields. Like this year I was especially impressed with the sky bridge, how they split the box tube in half to make the bridge. It's pretty 
cool. Yeah, I mean, the rover and rover ruckus just looked awesome. So I'm hoping that we get to see another field because they do a really good job with that stuff. Um, but I can also see it split, making the gap between poorer teams and richer teams even bigger because, I mean, sponsors may not be as generous this year with donations, and that could lead to teams not being able to fund a field. And that's a huge competitive advantage, especially in FTC, where there's such tight tolerances on these game elements, right? Like, you wouldn't know that these sky stones are flexing in or that uh, the foundation, how it clamps down and how it rubs against the ground without having those actual elements. And so uh, that may be something to consider. First updates now, FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live and independent.